Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage here at Cisco Live. This is exclusive coverage, our pop-up CUBE. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, host of theCUBE, Tom Gillis, CUBE alumni, and Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Security Business Group at Cisco. Great to see you, thanks for coming on. Hey, good, to have, good to have you back, thanks guys. Yeah. Yeah. Really appreciate it, I know you got a lot of a lot of busy schedule, you know, short time. Customers. Customers. All these we, pesky customers. Uh, uh, we yes. appreciate your time. Yes. The security cloud, big yeah. part of the announcement before, yeah. now network yeah. cloud, what's the story yeah. coming together? Yeah, where, where I think the opportunity is, where security meets the networking, Cisco can really shine. Really, really shine. So let's think about secure access. I want to allow the finance team to access finance apps and the sales team to access sales apps, but you do not want salespeople accessing finance apps. The way those apps are defined is networking, right? And so being able to, to implement that policy in a seamless way that works for legacy apps as well as new applications, that works on-prem and remote, that's where security meets the network. And that's what we've been focusing on today at the, at the show. Well, the other piece of the announcement, I was, remember watching the, the preview under NDA and I saw you had this thing where you say, okay, well, what pipe do you want to use for your water? Yeah. Do you want to use copper? Do you yeah. want to use PVC? And like, yeah. That's so, so dumb. And yeah. so explain how that relates to VPN versus yeah. cloud services yeah. and what you've specifically done yeah. there. Yeah, it's a great question. So, so yesterday we had a session with about 75 of our, our large customers and I asked them to show of hands, who has a zero trust project underway that they've implemented something? 75, yeah. Yeah, 100% of them went up. And then I was like, show of hands, who is also running a VPN next to this zero trust thing? So what happens is, if you want to put an application into that zero trust framework, there's a, a, a gateway, a network interface that has to talk to that application. And the challenge is, some applications don't like talking to that gateway. Some applications like SAP, they're multi-channel. Some applications do what's called server-side initiation. And so you can get some of the apps into a zero trust framework and others have to live in a VPN. So we put the burden on the user to know the difference. People probably relate to this, like, oh, if I'm going to Workday, I just log in and go. But if I want to go to SAP or Jira, which is on-prem, I have to launch the VPN. A totally different experience, different password, different policy. And kind of that's the moral equivalent of asking your user who's getting a glass of water, do you want that delivered via copper pipe or iron pipe or plastic? What? Depending what kind of water, sparkling water, yeah, yeah, exactly. flat water. Just, you know what I want? <laughs> I want to turn it on, I fill my glass, turn it off, go on to my next thing, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, so, so the choice of VPN versus zero trust tunnel, that's plumbing. We're plumbers. And so, so one of the points of differentiation here at the show is that we brought together traditional VPN and modern zero trust into one seamless end user experience, no more plumbing. You've that extracted secure that, across, whether it's on-prem, in the cloud, across clouds. Legacy apps, new apps, SaaS apps. And what we would call super cloud. Yeah, that's yeah. super right? security. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So super security cloud. So, yeah. so is that the secure access product you announced? Yes. Okay, that's yes. okay. So yes. it's on all environments. Yes. Edge? Ed, well, so it's on-prem, on campus. And then anywhere an that you would want to go, and I think you live on the edge, dude, right? So if you're yeah. living on the <laughs> edge, <laughs> then <laughs> you know, it's, it's going to work. No, it's really about allowing users to access applications wherever they want. I think the edge thing you're referring to is can we move applications you know, into computers that are sitting out there? Yeah, that's yeah. a separate that, topic. You're talking about network device that you have, and campus would be defined by endpoint. Yeah, your laptop. So a big part of the announcement is we announced with Apple, this is built into iOS. So you're on an iPhone, an iPad, uh, you want to be able to access the, those legacy applications as well as the new applications, it just works. The and, one and, the, and the example you just gave, moving apps to the edge, that's futures, and it's technically feasible? Yes, oh, can we see it? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Edge so computing is- Needs some time. Needs some well, time. To figure out the yes. edge. And, yep. yeah. Congratulations yeah. on the, on the uh, security super cloud, because that's what we've been, we've been reporting, that this fabric layer that spans environments is key. Yeah. There's also a nuanced point in the keynote I want to get your reaction and quick explanation. There was an AWS, component, and um, it was called AWS. Um, it's called multi-cloud defense. Yes, can you explain about? that, yes. Yes, so, so, so there was really two big parts of the announcement, and they both share a principle of zero trust. So the, the, the first was that secure access is, let's make sure that the IT people can access IT apps and the finance people can access finance apps. That's the least privilege, right? You get to, to use the stuff you need and nothing else. Sometimes people forget that applications are people too and they should be treated the same way. So if you move a workload out onto Amazon, right now today, you set up a connection between your private cloud and your public cloud, 
everything can come back through that connection and go wherever it's going to go. There's no least privilege on that. So if I want to make it so that the marketing app on Amazon can talk to a customer database on-prem and only the customer database on-prem, that's a least privilege concept. It's hard to do. And this is a problem that we solve uniquely. The reason it's hard is that a private cloud is all built around an IP address or networking, right? VLANs and VRFs as the segment of identity or the basis of identity. But on Amazon, it's services. It's things like Redshift, Lambda, right? S3 buckets. And so, so you need a translation layer that can speak the language of the public cloud and the language of the private cloud and set up that least privilege app to app communication. So two big announcements today. One to do least privilege user to app, and then the other is when an app wants to talk to another app, how we can do that across class. And that translation layer is a hunk of software, it's a, is, it a, is it a PaaS, is it a purpose-built PaaS? Here's the beautiful thing, it? it's, it's software as a service, and it's shipping now, Yeah. right? And so it's, it's called Cisco Multi-Cloud Defense, and you log into it in a cloud-delivered service, you put the little software gateway wherever you want it on, it works on every cloud, yeah. we talked about Amazon, but it works on, on Microsoft, it works on Google, yeah. right? So it's a true, multi-cloud, cloud-native yeah. piece of Same software. Same experience across clouds? Same experience right? across clouds. Yeah. It understands the language of each one of the clouds, which mm -hmm. is a little bit different. And you hide all that. And we hide all that, and we make it a drop-down menu for the administrator to say, this app can talk to this customer database and only this customer What's database. What's been the reaction of customers to this? They're like, where have you been? <laughs> this is a huge problem. Validate super cloud. Yeah, yeah. validate super cloud. Because it's, it's not to say that clouds can't talk to each other. They yeah. can, just, but they just have just, unlimited yeah. talk to each yeah. other, and that's no bueno, right? So we've got to think about a way that we can yeah. put I, sensible controls in place mm -hmm. for zero trust. I was raising my hand. I didn't get called on during the <laughs> analyst executive session. I'm, they didn't recognize me. They knew late. you were getting a one-on-one. <laughs> they, they one okay. Private uh, session. I was going to ask gonna, Ask away. I was going to ask Chuck and, and the team. Yeah. You know, multi-cloud, everyone has like, multiple clouds by default, okay, yes. I got acquisition, I got yes. Microsoft, I got Amazon, I got a lot yes. on-prem. Yeah. They didn't really, it's not really multi-cloud. What you're bringing into is an architectural thing that allows multi-cloud or super cloud to happen. That software that you're running. I'll even put a little nuance on that. Yeah. Multi-cloud's already happening. Yeah. Everybody's already using multiple public clouds and private clouds. We're bringing security to it so that we can put those boundaries in place that the app can talk to another app with least privilege. It's really, really important because as you get to scale, if you're an enterprise customer and you have tens, hundreds, now all of a sudden maybe a thousand applications running on the public cloud, they're all reaching back to different stuff on-prem. That's a really big attack surface out there. And if one of them has one little tiny problem, that's a pathway that attackers can yeah. go right into your source code repository. You don't want that. I've heard startups <laughs> trying to do this cloud to multi-cloud thing from, from Amazon to Azure, but what's happening is the network owners, <laughs> the Cisco customers, are still on-premise with their with, with, their Cis, with their Cisco yeah. thinking. They don't, yeah. no, they're, not, they're not fully yes. in the cloud yet. Yes. So they're kind of controlling the yes. table. They got yes. ball control. But this, this gives that networking person the ability to speak the language of the cloud, whether it's private to public or public to public, as you and said. And you're taking right? away the complexity of them having to figure out for each individual cloud. You, what I, was pitched, I had met with a bunch of customers and they're like, this is such a pain point for me now because when something moves on the public cloud and I'm trying to translate an IP address, I have to manually go configure hundreds of firewalls with a new IP address because a workload moved in, in Azure. With our solution, it just happens okay. automatically. Oh, so, raise my hand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love this. So your customer's saying, where were you? I'm meaning they, they were waiting for this. Yes. Who wins? Stack rank the order of personas that win with this new solution. Yeah. Is it I, the network guy on premise? Is it the CIO? Is it the app guy? What's I the, think at the end of the day, it's the firewall administrator. Right, so, so which is, is part of the network team but has a security charter. Because this is fundamentally a security decision, right? Like I said, cloud to cloud connections work but they're wild, wild west, or yeah. anything goes. And we're like, hey, wait, 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 wait a minute. Let's put some common sense, watertight compartments in there so that if there's a problem, it's not going to you know, open up everything in the empire. That's so it, mistake prone. Yes. I mean. It's common sense, right? right? Does like, it, you know, like, like, does it change any routing, like whether it's MPLS or IP no, routing? No, 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 no. So it's all an overlay on top. We use okay. tags and identity. So it doesn't have to change any of the plumbing underneath. Got it. And it is works there any on overhead associated with that? Or is there any, any Virtually drawback? none. So it's it's a gateway that, that is processing these packets at extremely high performance and it's a scale out architecture, so it can run 
Yeah. You know, we have really no effective performance All right, awesome. Today. Where's this go? Shoot the arrow forward five years. What, what's the, what do you see happening from this enablement, this new con connective tissue, this, this super security cloud capability? Yeah, well, you know, five years from now, my view is that, that uh, what you think of as a firewall will be long forgotten. And, and network security will be both auto-configuring, meaning it'll write its own policies. That's not science fiction, right? And it will also be auto-updating meaning you'll never have to upgrade these things. These are manual processes yeah. today that burn a lot of cost, a lot of anxiety, and they create outages. Like if you remember Southwest Airlines, yeah, and yeah. their outage, that was a uh, firewall I, outage, I right? Yeah, I was yeah, yeah, yeah. so was I. I was kind of a little grumbly, like, <laughs> hey, God, firewall guys, you know, could you do yeah. better? Yes, we could do better. Yeah. Yeah. So, so building autonomous uh, security that doesn't require a lot of manual setup and a lot of yeah. manual maintenance, is well so I, within I our I know you're super busy, but we're going to go deeper on this on July 18th. Tom's yeah. going to be back, and we're going to have Super Cloud 3. Nice. We'll 30 seconds, on 30 this. seconds left. AI, you didn't AI, no AI washing, clear, low, low hanging fruit use cases on configuration, yeah. and you built a product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> okay, you built a product yes. with AI. Yes, so, so we've been doing AI for 20 years, right? Going all the way back to my days at Ironport when we built a spam filter. It was AI that could read a million messages and say this is spam and this one's not. <laughs> and so, so what we're using AI for now is to f solve that firewall problem. If you've ever looked at a firewall, the firewall rule set, there's hundreds of thousands of rules and it's like gibberish, right? IP port and protocol, very, very hard mm -hmm. to understand. With generative AI, we can now put a layer on top where you can talk to your firewall. Literally, you can say, hey, you know, does Tom have access to the resources he needs? Yeah. Yes, these are the things that Tom can see. It's like Star Trek. Voice, computer. Yes. yes. <laughs> Give me access. <laughs> yes. Tom yes. Gillis, he's got to run. He's getting pulled out of here. We'll take the last minute. Thanks for coming on. No, thanks we'll for having me. Always 18. a pleasure Thank to you. see you guys. July 18th, okay. supercloud.world. Check that URL out. That's where we will be going. It's a supercloud world, and we're living in it with theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante with Tom Gillis, Senior Vice President, General Manager of the Cisco Security Business Group. We'll be back with more coverage after this short break.